What's up, guys? So this is it. This is the last one. Um, so I'm going to do IOC today. And um, <clears throat> that should be the last one, right? So there were uh, no other reprints uh, worthy of discussion. Ancient Sanctuary uh, was was reprinted in 2005 and Master Collection 2, but the cards aren't any different. So um, I may do like a European or um, a uh, like a foreign reprint thing, but this is the last one. So let's uh, let's take a look at some of this stuff. Oh, let me show you guys this. I got this really cool, really cool shirt. <laughs> Let me see. All right, here we go. All right, so I think everybody is um, familiar with familiar with this. So we'll kind of go through. Um, yep, 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 yep. So um, what you need to know is IOCEN comes in. Um, Force of the Breaker Special Edition. You will always get IOCN. It's not like Glass SE, um, where only the Euro. Um, FOTB SE will always have IOCEN. Always. LC01, Binder. Um, LC01, Game Board, 2013, 2014, 2017. All right. So for this, you need to know these, right? The um, the 2010 copies have the red banner, and then the 14 and the 17 have the um, the newer logo. Pretty easy, right? And then the back, if you only see the back, if it has an EAN, and it looks like this, but then it says six plus years, then it's definitely Legendary Collection 2010. If it just has six plus years and no e e EAN, then it's the Game Board Edition. All right, let's uh, scroll for a long time. For a long, long time. Because we're going all the way to the end of this, like, 261-slide document. This is a huge, huge thing. Uh, no, this is LOD. Let's keep going. Dark Crisis and Invasion of Chaos. Okay, here we go. 2004, 2007, and then um, 2010. So I, I forgot to put that on here. But um, I put for Dark Crisis. Yeah, I just need to put that there. If I don't do this, I forget. I forget everything. I'm like a goldfish. Look at that. Gross. So, there we go. All right. So, th these are my recommendations to PSA, right? So, um, you know, all of these should be recognizable. I don't think I ran into one that I could not separate. So, all right. So, I'm going to explain this. IOC is really weird when it comes to, like, IPCs. Um, most sets are um, um, like unlimited hobby will be together, unlimited retail will be together, first edition hobby will be together, first edition retail will be together. IOC is not like that. IOC has like really weird um, IPCs. In fact, um, I can probably break it out, but um, I'm going to need to pull up something else. Um, this is this is what will explain it. So the IPCs are a little weird, but I'm gonna try and show you what I mean by that. So when you look at this, right, I'm gonna show you what they normally look like. So you have like DCR, right, and you see first ed is together, and it's one, two, three, right, case, box, pack, unlimited hobby, one, two, three, case, box, pack, four, five, six, retail. One, two, three, case box pack, seven, eight, nine. 
See what I mean? Like, so all of these, like, even the blisters are together, unlimited, and then you have this, like, weird double blister. Don't worry about that. That's weird. Um, IOC is not like that. So there's two versions of Invasion of Chaos. There's um, one with the Shonen Jump logo, and there's one without the Shonen Jump logo. And they have different um, ways of compartmenting IPCs. So the one with Shonen Jump logo is the one that I believe was released for North America, right? Um, well, it was released first. I'll just say that. It was the first release of um, IOC. And it's got all of... I think this is what it is. Yeah, yeah, this is, this is right. This is correct. Okay. I had to make sure I was telling you guys the truth. Yes, I believe this is the first one that came out and it has complete... It is a hobby and retail, first edition and unlimited. So it's got... Four different types. Four. I almost said six. Four. So you got unlimited hobby, unlimited retail, first edition hobby, first edition retail. Okay. So, and I'm going to do this when I do IOC sealed TV, so you'll see it. But just so you know, like, unlimited um, exists for both types, um, hobby and retail, with the Shonen Jump logo. And they do it really weird. It's hobby pack, unlimited, hobby pack, first ed together, four, five. First ed, IOC retail pack. Unlimited IOC retail pack six seven, first ed hobby case, first ed hobby box. See, I don't, but I don't really know because again, like um, a lot of these things are hard to verify. Like, have you ever seen a hobby case of IOC? Probably not, right? Like ninety five percent of us probably have not. So you know, is it two seven eight? I don't know, but I can tell you for sure that the hobby box is two seven nine, the unlimited hobby box is two eight one. So it could be. You know, first dead hobby box, unlimited hobby box, but I'm not really sure. Oh, no, it can't be that because I've seen the unlimited hobby box. So I think this is the way. God damn it. I think this is the way that they're compartmented. Hobby case, hobby box, hobby case, hobby box. 78798081. And I know that because I know I've seen the hobby box unlimited and I know I've seen the hobby box on first dead. Okay. And then the only two that I'd be missing are the hobby case and the hobby case for unlimited and first dead. So I plug those in there. Doesn't mean they were going to be right. It just means that that's like my best guess. So when you get down to the retail stuff again, like I've seen the retail box and I've seen the retail box here too, unlimited and first ed. So I plug those in there. And then the blisters are all together. So blister box 287, blister 288, blister case. Um, sorry, blister box. I should say blister box. Um, and then blister. Sometimes they call them blister cartons, so you know. And then this is the only, I think, IOC is the only one with a first dead double blister. I don't think any other sets have a first dead double blister. All right, this one. This is the, this is the IOC release that I have the most trouble with. These are really hard to find pictures of. Um, one that I know for sure exists, first at IOC Hobby. This exists for sure. And I know that the unlimited retail exists. So those are the two that I know for sure exist. First Ed Hobby, unlimited retail. Okay, so to, to caveat this a little bit, um, this, this also happens in GX a little bit, right? So unlimited GX boxes, um, like the only way to get Hobby unlimited GX is a Euro copy. That's the only way. And I think it's because you can get anything in the unlimited packs in, in Europe, right? In the U.S., all of the unlimited GX boxes, I think, are retail. And so you cannot get a North American, a non-Euro copy of, like, say, unlimited um, Cyber and Dragon, right, for example. Or Horus, level 8. Or, um, I don't know what I'd say, um, whatever RDS is, like... Uh, um, Perfectly Ultimate Machine King, I think that's one, right? So you can't get those in unlimited North American. They are only Europe. So this exists, right? This this has happened before. Um, so we know that this has happened. I have never seen unlimited hobby IOC without the Shonen Jump logo. Never seen it. And this is what the um, IPC laydown would look like. Two 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 three two four one zero two five two two. 102523102524. I have also never seen First Ed retail without the Shonen Jump logo. 
All right. I'm going to show you what I mean by this in a minute. So I've never seen this and I've never seen this. And I have looked at like over a hundred IOC pack sales, like over a hundred, probably more than that, probably 200. Um, I have, I've scoured the internet. I've scoured every corner of the internet and never seen one. So that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It just means that I haven't seen it and I've looked everywhere. So you know that it exists. Please, please DM me and show me a picture. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go back to IOC now that we've explained how the pack works. All right. Just so everybody knows, IOC is like the most convoluted thing ever. Okay. Save. Definitely save that. All right. So now we know. So now I can explain this. Okay. So when we go into 2004 Unlimited, there's, there are two different types that we're going to talk about. One of them has the Shonen Jump logo on the front of the pack. This one I know for sure, right? Shonen Jumps, Yu-Gi-Oh, Invasion of Chaos. This one for sure has Hobby and Retail in Unlimited. Okay. This one for sure has Retail. For sure. It does not have Hobby so far that I know. So there is no hobby without a Shonen Jump logo, right? And again, just so you can see, right? No Shonen Jump, Shonen Jumps. No Shonen Jump, Shonen Jumps. It's not a magic trick. The packs are real, I promise you. I've only seen like three images of boxes. I've seen the box, never seen the pack. Never seen the pack. So if you, if you have a pack that says 102530, Please, please DM me. Please DM me. Okay, so these are your hobby and retail, right? Hobby Unlimited, 102275, 102277, all right? It's not spaced out like by three or by six. It's normally spaced out by six. Here it's spaced out by two because IOC is dumb. Okay, and then these are spaced out by six because these are the standard lay down. But I think these came out second. All right. So you've got the 2007 retail pack. What do I mean by that? So we know this is a retail pack because it's got the retail code, but that doesn't really mean anything because like when they reprint these, like you can, you can get either secret. So it's not like you're only gonna get, um, what is it? Um, Invader of Darkness. You're also gonna be able to get um, Chaos Emperor Dragon, right? These are the EN packs. So obviously Chaos Emperor Dragon IOC EN000 exists, so you can get either one. They only reprint packs with the hobby with the retail code. Except for like Pharaoh Servant. For some reason, Pharaoh Servant got both. But it doesn't matter. Um, you can get both in these packs, but generally speaking, um, Konami and Upper Deck only use the retail codes for secondary releases. So and then just so you see, there's the retail code. And this is why I think that these were the first releases, because this is the code that's that's used for IOC EN. So, and that's how you know, like it's got the, um, well, they all have English edition because IOC was worldwide, but um, it also has this on the reverse, right? And then it's got the EAN as well. Um, and it's got this, um, see, see the licensing data is different. It's got the upper deck logo. It's got this little thing on the bottom. It doesn't have an EAN, right? That's how you know. Science. Look at that. All right, we already talked about this. But if you want to look at it again, you definitely can. All right, now we're gonna get into the good stuff, right? This is what everybody wanted. Please do an IOC video. Yes, done. Do not ask again, we've done it. All right, again, this is like something that you see a lot. This card can only be special summoned by. That's an old way of saying, um, some, of describing a summoning effect. Um, Summoning requirement, sorry. This card cannot be special summoned or set, right? That's, that was the new way of saying it. So that's the way you tell the difference. And you also see that there's a, a little space here, right? No space. You also see the color is different, right? Um, but that's not like the best way to tell, but... Um, and then obviously IOC EN is 2007. 
You say it's 2007. Apparently on Fandom it says 2005. It is not 2005. There is no release for IOC EN in 2005. It doesn't exist. People think that it's IOC EN 2005 because they think it comes in Master Collection 2. It does not come in Master Collection 2. Watch any Master Collection 2 opening and there is no IOC EN in those packs. None. If you're listening, right, if you're a grader and you're putting 2005, it's wrong. It is not 2005. It is 2007. You can only get these in FOTBSE, Special Edition, and those were released in 2007. Master Collection 2 does not have EN packs. That's why there's no MFCEN, PGDEN, or ASTEN. Doesn't exist. There are none. Sorry, EN collectors. You cannot collect all 11 sets. I've already tried. Okay. Um, end phase of this. On the first line, right? Zoom it in. Boom. Wow. That's the difference, right? End phase of this. That's it. That's the whole thing. Um, I didn't pick versions of this card to show that like looked kind of close. I have some, right? And they're from the 2010 binder sets. I was sold a, a set of original IOC cards and um, turns out they're all from 2010. The guy thought that they were original because they look original, right? They look like the original, but he didn't look at the errata, right? So the text in the card would tell you completely. I looked at the common cards just to test my theory and even the common cards, the errata is there. So um, DD Scout Plane, three lines of text. DD Scout Plane, two lines of text. You can tell like... This is actually a uh, 2010 copy, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. You can tell because like the um, foiling is not like, it's not as, it's not as bumpy as it, it's, it should be. I think this is a 2010 copy, to be honest. If I'm being honest. All right, Freed, the Brave Wanderer. Remove two light monsters and then it says once per turn. Sorry, itchy. God damn it, why am I so itchy? Oh, God. Remove two light monsters from your graveyard, and then, you know, it says once per turn, you can remove two light monsters from play. Remove from play two light. Why do people write like that? It's so weird. All right. Um, Chaos Rider Goof Staff. Remove two light monsters, and, and then, you know, once per turn. So, there you go. Same thing. You can remove two monsters. Yep, once per turn. I was like, I know I didn't. I know I didn't mess that up, right? All right. Here we go. This card can only be special summoned. This card cannot be normal summoned or set. Same old thing, right? All right, they're all spell cards, so the spell card thing doesn't work. And then here it says increase the attack of, and then on uh, the reprints it says select one beast type. Just so you can see it. Increase the attack of one face up beast type monster. Here it says select one beast type or beast warrior monster type, whatever the hell. It says something like that, all right? Let's see, DD Designator. Original cards say he, she has. Oh, not inclusive, jeez. Oh, jeez. Here it says they have. Inclusive. I'm just kidding. All right, yeah, so that's the difference right there. Science, okay. Um, you can tell right away, like, this has more text. Add your hand to your deck. All Add all cards in your hand to your deck. Jeez, when you thought it was implied, but, but it isn't, so you have to write it out and make the text longer. Big burn. I always thought this was pretty funny, right? A card that specifically designates... A card that targets a monster in the graveyard. Why does nobody play this? This would be a pretty good like anti-goat deck. Just removes everything in the graveyard.
graveyard from play, I'm pretty sure. Too bad you can't play Fiber Jar and Goat. It's my favorite card of all time, probably. The card that specifically designates a card that targets a monster. That's the difference here. This card does not get the respect it deserves. When your opponent... When your opponent's monster... Here it is. That's the difference right there. Monster is in there. Did I not change something? Oh, I don't think I changed the the, the actual thing here. Oops. Well, I'm glad that I I'm glad that I zoomed in here. It says when your opponents, and then this one says when your opponent's monster. Monster is on the sec on the first line, on the reprint. Ignore ignore this. I have to fix that. Sorry. Okay. When this card is normal or special summoned. When this card is normal or special summoned, you can add. When this card is normal summoned or special summoned. When this card is normal or special summoned, you can add. Yeah. It's because they wrote both normal summoned. Oh god. Yeah, okay, we're good. During the end phase of the turn? During the end phase of any turn? Oh, interesting. Errata actually helped this card be more playable? Not really. During the end phase of the turn, this card is sent to the graveyard. During the end phase of any turn, this card is sent to the graveyard, because it's not implied, it has to be said. Yes. Sometimes less is more, right? If the only cards on your, if your opponent controls no cards. Let's see what this is. If the only cards on your opponent's side of the field are defense position monster cards. This one, if your opponent controls no cards except defense position monsters. Insect princess. Okay. As long as this card remains face up, while this card is face up on the field. Pretty good, right? As long as this card remains face up on the field. When this card is face up on the field. Yep. Pretty easy, right? Levia Dragon Daedalus. Send Yumi. Is it Yumi or Umi? I used to call it Umi. Some people call it Yumi on your side of the field by sending Yumi on your side of the field. Interesting, interesting. Send Yumi on your side of the field to the graveyard, do a thing. By sending Yumi on your side of the field to the graveyard, do the exact same thing. That's it. Orca Mega Fortress of Darkness. This was pretty hard to find in Gem Mint 10. Petty Party had to help me out. Hooked it up. I think Petty Party did. Offer one torpedo fish by tributing one torpedo fish. It's pretty much implied back then that like offering was a tribute, right? Offering to the doomed, tribute to the doomed. When this card destroys a monster and sends it to the graveyard. When this card destroys a monster by battle. How else is it going to destroy it? <laughs> I mean, it would be interesting to hear somebody explain how it didn't destroy it by battle. Because it doesn't have an effect that destroys a monster necessarily. There are monsters as possible that have been removed from play. They are removed from play monsters as possible. Right? So, obviously this takes up two whole lines. This one only takes up like 75% of the line. All right, special summon it, and then it says summon it, right? So this one says special summon it on the last line, and this one says summon it, summon it. We're 
almost done, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Um, original card say you can only activate this card. And then LC01 copy say activate only when your opponent. You can only activate this card. When? Activate only when your opponent activates a trap card. And look. Lo and behold. Stars in the eye of Anubis. Dead giveaway. It must be a reprint. 100%. Not even 99. It's 100% of the time. On the field, your, comma, your, your opponent cannot. Hmm. This was an annoying card to find for a while. I-O-C-E-N. I-O-C-E-N is always 2007. Always. It's never 2005. It's not, I promise you. Guys who think EN comes in MC2, buy all the MC2. I bet every dollar in my bank account that every one of those is going to have IOC XXX. No EN. All the money. You can have all of it. I bet you. All of it. All right. That's it. That's it, guys. That's the whole thing. That's the whole thing. Um, yeah. That's it. All the reprints. Got it. So, um, I'm going to do one for foreign because there is a thing worth talking about for foreign. Um, I think that I'll just go through LOB, but, um, generally speaking, like foreign is, is the same thing, right? So, you know, I know that not everybody understands German, like not everybody understands like Korean and stuff. Um, if the effects change from the first ad, then it's a reprint. It has to be because the unlimited cards are supposed to be released when the first eds are released, like immediately after. So they have to have the same effects as the first editions, right? Because nobody changes the effect like between printings, unless it's like Trial of Hell or um, Enchanted Mermaid or um, like, what's the other one? Um, Woody Phantom changed. And then there's like one more, um, Succubus Knight. To remove death and hell and all that stuff because our protective parents and stuff like that in the 90s so um listen that's that's the end right so there's um there's no more there's no more reprint guides to do so um i'm gonna start pumping out the uh um the sealed the sealed guides so i'm gonna finish up the sealed guides and um, i am working on a thing right you guys wanted to see like um vintage japanese stuff um so like just to prove to you that i'm i'm working on this thing here um, I'm going to show you, I have it up here. So I am working on this, right? So I'm working on a thing, right? It's, it's for PSA, but, um, you know, we're going to talk about like all the rare stuff and I'll go through some of the highlights and, um, I'll do some videos where I explain like how, um, series one is compartmented and, and, and how it links to, the TCG and, and I think what that does is like when I started reading about the OCG right series one and series two I started to learn more about the way that the TCG is built and so like all of like the random sets that are like 144 cards are like you know 100 cards and then like the next one is like 120 cards or whatever like it all it all makes sense when you go back to series one um, and you look at series one it, it all makes sense so um, the other thing that I recommend, and I'm going to show you this because I think it's important, right? If you go to Yugipedia and you go to order of set release, right? Now, it's not like 100% totally inclusive, right? So, like, you're not going to see every single release here. However, um, you're, going to get the, you're going to get the lesson that you need, which is that all of the things that the TCG is built on um, are OCG, right? So... In order to understand the TCG, you have to understand the OCG. And once you once you make that quantum leap, right, like everything makes a lot more sense. Sorry, like my alarm's going off. It's time to wake up, apparently. But um, that that helped me. So I rec I totally recommend this. Um, you know, like this is this is a great thing to to peruse to like understand. Like 99, 2000, and 2001 Yu-Gi-Oh. When you, when you research this, right, everything in the TCG makes fucking sense. I promise you. Um, and, and it really was like, um, 
it really was huge for me to, to make that that jump. So um, hugely recommended. So I will do a thing on vintage uh, OCG. I just want to make sure I make the product correct. So I don't want to present some bogus product where I'm skipping back and forth between like um, PowerPoint and the internet and everything. I want to put it together so you guys can see it all the way that, that I see it. And right, and it'll be in the fancy PowerPoint thing that I make for PSA. So, um, hey, thank you guys for all of the support with these uh, reprint guides. Um, I am super stoked. Um, sorry, like my nose is itching. I have no idea why. So um, I'm super stoked that um, you guys really do like them. Um, and that most, most importantly, that they're really helpful. Even for PSA, because I think, you know, guys come here for... Um, graders come here and stuff like that to, to look at some of this stuff. That's what I've heard. So I don't know if that's true or not. Never seen a dude do it. But um, for, for all of you who like come here and you look at the guides and stuff like that, thank you. Um, and I do plan on releasing this publicly, but not for a while, right? Because, you know, obviously I made this for PSA and PSA pays me. So I have to respect that, right? So, um, you know, why why buy the cow if you get the milk for free, right? That's the, that's the thing. So... Um, I, I, I need to withhold this for some time and I will release it like the PowerPoint and everything. I just want to make sure that like, I, I give respect to the people who pay me, right? That's a thing. So, um, but in the meantime, right, the YouTube videos are up. It has nothing to do with making money on YouTube. I promise you, like there's no ad revenue. I, I don't have a monetized account. Like I don't have a thousand subs, so I don't make any money on these make zero, zero dollars. So. Um, thanks again. And, uh, this is, this is it. So, um, there will be no more. Thank you.